Welcome to Shonya Studio. In this playlist you can watch crime stories from all over the world, where apart from gaining knowledge about crime stories in other parts of the world it can also provide knowledge about, for example, the culture and habits of the people in that country. Don't forget to like share and subscribe to this channel if you like our video. Thank you. I will discuss a girl from Florida, America named Jennifer Me. When she was a teenager, her story went viral about her in 2007, suffering from hiccup. And she managed to win the hearts of everyone, because of what she experienced. However, what happened to her, when she started to grow up, was enough to upset many people, because it could be said, that she was the mastermind, behind a quite sad case. Before we continue, support this channel by pressing the subscribe button, and also turning on the notifications, so that next time, for example, if I upload something exciting, you will be the first to know. Her full name is Jennifer Me born in St. Petersburg, Florida, America, on the 28th of July 199. Her mother was a single parent, and managed to raise her, and her younger siblings. This story begins, on the 23rd of January, 2007, when Jennifer was still 15 years old, at that time. And she was in her class at school, suddenly she hiccuped. At first, Still he cooped occasionally, but then it got worse, and didn't stop. Even up to an hour. The teacher and her friends, tried to give her something to drink, and took Jennifer to the health section, at school. They gave several treatment, but it didn't stop the hiccups. At home, on that evening Jennifer's family also tried to give her drinks, and some therapy that could get rid of the hiccups. They took her to the pediatrician and end specialist, but it didn't go away. As the days went by, Jennifer said her hiccups, became more annoying, and painful. It is said that Jennifer hiccups, more than 50 times, per minute. Well, you can imagine, how much she suffered. So hiccups like this, make it difficult for Jennifer to sleep, eat, or even chat with other people. Day by day, she said her chest, was getting more painful, her throat was sore, and sometimes she was having convulsions. Several doctors have carried out, blood test scans and administered medication. But the doctor seemed to have given up, and didn't know what happened to Jennifer. Jennifer couldn't even go to school, because her hiccups were getting worse, and annoying. Because of this disturbance, Jennifer became viral, and became the main focus of the media. She became the center of pity for everyone, who knew about her hiccups. She also got the nickname, The Hiccup Girl. Sound echoes through the TIA terminal, announcing the arrival of 15-year-old Jennifer Mee. Hi, how are you? I'm good. That sound has been her constant companion since the first hic. Four weeks ago tomorrow. And the sound is the least of it. I get really bad chest pain, abdominal pains, throat pains, back pains. It's unbelievable. We've been keeping her spirits up, keeping her smiling, but when she starts hurting and starts crying, that's when it breaks my heart, so there's nothing I can do for her. After the attack started in science class on January 23rd, Jennifer's parents took her to any doctor they thought might be able to help. But I've been to um, neurologists, pediatricians, um, cardiologists to get MRIs, CAT scans, blood work, everything. And nothing. Nothing. Then Jennifer and her parents embarked on a whirlwind media tour, appearing on local and national news shows, hoping someone would be able to offer a solution. This prompted people, to to send tips and advice to Jennifer's parents, to help get rid of her hiccups. Some, said she drank a gallon of water, they were told to swallow a lot of peanut butter, some told her to soak scissors in hot water, for 30 minutes, then drink the hot water. Breathe in a paper bag. 
Basically it's strange, but still no results. And what is certain is, that many people also provided financial assistance to Jennifer, even singer Keith Urban, also invited the public, to provide assistance and prayers, for her recovery. Some people think, it's Tourette disease. But according to the doctor, if Jennifer had Tourette, it should have happened, since Jennifer was little, since birth. But it seems, that it was the Tourette specialist, who was then able to help Jennifer, with her therapy. Such as the correct way to sleep and sit, giving special drinks, and of course suitable medicines. She gradually recovered, and her hiccups, began to decrease. This then seems, to have touched the hearts of people in America. Then made her an idol. Because Jennifer was still young, and continued to struggle with the hiccups, that occurred. A few months later, Jennifer started to get better, and asked to go back to school. Jennifer's life returned to normal, as a cheerful girl, who loved her younger siblings. And she was well known in her household, as a kind and helpful girl. Basically everyone is happy with Jennifer's recovery. Shonya Studio is a channel of crime stories from around the world. Please you like and subscribe this channel if you like our criminal stories. Thank you. Jennifer's life seemed to be starting to change, when her mother remarried, and Jennifer seemed to be less compatible, with her stepfather. It is even said, that Jennifer once, ran away from home, until her mother, put the story in the newspaper, about her escape. Finally Jennifer came home too. And it seems that when she ran away, from home, Jennifer's company was not good. According to some people, she started to like consuming illegal drugs. In 2010, when Jennifer was 19 years old, she was dating a man, named Lamont Newton. According to some people, Lamont is quite famous in Florida, as a person who likes to consume, and also sell drugs. And often commit robbery. Jennifer's mother forbade her, from dating Lamont. But Jennifer said, Lemon had changed for the better now. Jennifer spends a lot of time with Lamont, and several of Lamont's other friends. One day, Jennifer and Lamont planned to rob. Because they started to fall into drugs and ran out of money. Finally, Jennifer looked for prey, by getting to know a man, through an internet dating site. She also knows a guy, named Shannon Griffin who is 22. Shannon recently moved, to Florida from Mississippi. After Hurricane Katrina. Shannon is a good man, and also an accomplished football athlete, which can lead him, to go to college. Shannon's friends define him, as a very friendly, and helpful guy. After meeting Jennifer online, Shannon seemed very happy. They made several video calls, and Shannon really liked Jennifer. He really have a crush on Jennifer, and can't wait to meet her. But unfortunately Shannon didn't know, Jennifer's intentions at that time. Shannon was very excited, to meet Jennifer. Thought they were going out, or just having a one night stand. They also arranged to meet, and Shannon was dressed really cool. Shannon's cousin even said, that Shannon wears a lot of perfume. Buy new clothes, look cool and ride a scooter, to St. Petersburg to meet Jennifer. But it turns out, the place they agreed on, is a bit strange. Not a restaurant, or a beautiful park, but in front of an alley, on either side are empty houses, that are being sold. When they met, Jennifer told Shannon that she should go first, to the end of the alley. Because Jennifer wanted to buy marijuana. And it turned out, 
that at the end of the dark alley, there were already Lamont, her boyfriend, and another friend, named Laren. At that time, Jennifer told Shannon to pay for the marijuana. Then suddenly Jennifer just left, as planned, and left Shannon with Lamont and Laren. Because at that time Jennifer's plan, was only to take Shannon into the alley, to be robbed. Jennifer immediately went far away somewhere, hid and it looked like Shannon, was the one who wanted to be robbed by Lamont and Laren, put up a fight. And the robbery wasn't as easy as they thought. Shannon was very strong enough, to be able to fight them both, until Lamont and Laren shot Shannon, until he died. And they only got $50 from Shannon's wallet. Just imagine, they shot Shannon to death for just $50. At that time the three of them, immediately ran away, and left the gun at the scene. Back to Lamont's apartment, and they're freaking out. They started arguing. Why did he have to shoot and so on, all they plans were no longer suitable, and he was forced to shoot, said Lamont. They hid Shannon's wallet in the air vent, and he said they were shaking tremendously, because they were panicking. The next day, the 24th of October, 2010, the police immediately found out who the perpetrator was. They checked Shannon's cell phone number, with whom he last texted or called to meet. Fingerprints and also DNA on the gun were left behind. It was very easy to catch these three people. When Jennifer, Lamont and Laren were first interviewed, the reason was because Shannon was teasing and hurting Jennifer. So Lamont planned to defend Jennifer at that time. Jennifer thought, that if it was discovered, that she was involved in a robbery, she would definitely be punished severely, because it was very strict. Penalties related to robbery, let alone involving victims. What's worse, it turns out that Lamont, her boyfriend, told Jennifer to just confess everything. He said she is a famous girl, who has hiccups, and is loved by all Americans. I'm sure, the police and judges feel sorry for you, because your story, has touched the hearts of many people. We'll be free, if they find out, you were the hiccup girl first. Influenced by Lamo's words, Jennifer finally, confessed to all the crimes. And she said he was involved, in the robbery of Shannon. Thought that everyone, would feel sorry for her, but in fact, the opposite happened. Jennifer, Lamont and Laren are charged with first-degree criminal mischief, taking the life of another person, and burglary. They were also charged, with possession of firearms, and illegal drugs. Police say me lured a man to a home while the two men with her robbed him at gunpoint. Police say the victim was shot and killed. Police say all three admitted to their involvement and all three now face first degree felony murder charges this morning. Actually became the focus of the prosecutor's attention, even though it wasn't Jennifer who pulled the trigger on the gun on Shannon. Jennifer is thought to have made Shannon come to the scene. She was the one who tricked and led Shannon there. In fact, he was the one who chose Shannon as his victim. Jennifer was the mastermind, and Lamont and Laren were the ones who executed it. The prosecutor's team demanded that the three of them be sentenced, to a minimum of 25 years, and a maximum of life imprisonment. However, Jennifer's lawyer and family then asked the court, to give a maximum sentence of 15 years, considering that Jennifer had experienced severe hiccups, and was afraid that the disease would recur. It is also called a court, which cannot be negotiated with. It also became a controversy, where many felt, that Jennifer should just be released. Because she wasn't there, and was hiding when Shannon, was shot. Lamont and Laren, should have been imprisoned because their plan was only to rob them. However, the police also suspect that Jennifer is not that innocent because Jennifer's DNA was found on Shannon's clothes 
either she touched Shannon, when they first met, or she was Shannon, after being shot. The lawyer also said, that Jennifer had many other illnesses, which made her, sometimes unaware, of her own behavior. But according to expert information, Jennifer is said, to be very healthy, and fully aware of her actions. The doctor who had treated Jennifer's hiccups, was also taken to court. It was said, that Jennifer indeed had symptoms, of Tourette, but the judge became even more angry, and said, that the Tourette or hiccups, had nothing to do with the crime, they had committed with great planning. If she knows, she has a disease, why doesn't he she, just stay at home and wander around in the middle of the night, and lure the victim, to the location. For the prosecutor and judge, if Jennifer had not been there, Shannon would never have been there at the scene. Jennifer had manipulated Shannon, into wanting to meet her, in that dark place. In essence, these three people all consciously, and premeditatedly committed, this crime. Until finally in 2013, the jury and judge sentenced Jennifer, to life imprisonment without being allowed, to be released on bail at any time. In this case Jennifer will be in prison, until the end of her life. He also cried in court. Shannon Griffin's parents were very satisfied with this punishment, even though they knew that no matter how severe the punishment they received, they would not be able to bring their child back to life. But this process can be a lesson so that there are no more Shannon Griffins. Lamont and Laren were also jailed for life for this case. And it seems that Jennifer's mother is very devastated and doesn't accept her daughter, being imprisoned for life. We've always wanted it to be about the victim. We are still grieving, and we just want wanted it to be about him. It's been a long journey. It's been almost three years. It's, it's been a struggle, and we're just really grateful to the state for pushing this through. Now, our cameras were, were rolling as Mee's mother left the courtroom, flanked by family members. You can see she was very upset. I tried asking her a few questions, but she did not want to talk. Mee's mother did not make it back into the courtroom in time to hear the verdict. Instead, she found out from family members that her daughter will spend the rest of her life behind bars without the possibility. Jennifer is currently serving her sentence at Lowell Correctional Institution in Florida. Jennifer admit that she was wrong in choosing friends and relationships until she fell into drugs, which began to damage her mind. She feels ashamed of the society that once supported her, but is now disappointed that she committed a crime. But her younger siblings and mother diligently visited her, giving her strength and hope to survive. In fact, the family and lawyers have made several appeals. But it seems to have been rejected, because after studying this case, it can be said, that Jennifer was the mastermind. As I said earlier, many felt that this punishment was too harsh for Jennifer, because it seemed like, they were just feeling sorry for her. But nevertheless the law must be firm, and enforced. And the latest news I got is, that Jennifer is acquainted with a prisoner, who is serving a life sentence too. And they fell in love, in the cell, and the important thing is, to love each other and be happy. Even though, they are both girls. What do you think? Jennifer's life sentence is too heavy, considering that she used to have hiccups. 
or it would be fitting to know that she was the one who invited Shannon to the scene. You comment below. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like and share buttons. For those who are stopping by for the first time, or have stopped by often, but haven't subscribed yet. Don't forget to click the subscribe button first, and turn on the notification. So that next time, for example, if I upload a new video, you will be the first to know. And don't forget, to watch all my other videos. Remember to watch your fingers and lips, so you don't hurt other people's hearts. Thank you.